Welcome back to Quinton. I've got some footage for you of removing the piston from the crosshead. It's a, it's a bit of an operation, requires some special tools and it's not really that easy to get to see it because with the cylinders being inside the frames there's not a lot of room to get a camera in and do any work so I'm going to show, demonstrate using the lovely white we call yet again, my lovely assistant, um, exactly what's involved because having outside cylinders you can see them nice and neatly so let's go have a look. The loads here go both ways because it's double acting. So not only do you have the piston pushing the crosshead, you also have it pulling it on the forward stroke. So it's that key and that taper fit that keeps it all together. The key there is retained mostly by its seat. You, you have to smack it in pretty hard with a, a big hammer, but it's actually retained as a, a, I don't know if we can see it under here, not easily. There's a split pin basically like everything else on the steam engine there's split pins uh, it's a special one there you are so we have a special hold in the frames you can see there's the crosshead down there if you get it in a, a certain position and get ah, oh, we're actually in position here and get the the spokes in the right position as well you can actually get a piece of rod up through that hole and onto the bottom is it that hole? No, maybe. No, that hole, sorry, that's from removing the um, uh, retaining pin for the little end, which I'll explain in a moment. This hole down here is the one, and it's actually in pretty good position, although the coupling rod maybe not be, um, for getting a rod up, because the, the key sits at a 45 degree angle, getting a rod up to the bottom of it and bonking it out of the hole. So we've got a bit of footage for that. Apologies for the poor audio quality on this clip. We were trying to use a different camera and it didn't really work out. Also ignore the date. I have no idea why it says 2015. This is the view from inside. So that's the rod that's going through the hole in the frames and seating on the bottom of that key. Um, again, like I said before, it's not a particularly easy thing to get a camera down to and get a good view, but uh, there you go, there's my hand appearing to uh, to hold the, the bar while Dave's outside the frames, smacking it with a big sledgehammer. And you'll see in just a moment, there you go. This one actually came out pretty easily. This is the, the other side to yep. the previous clip, but you get the idea, hopefully. Once you've got that out, you use the, the special crosshead splitting tool. That's it. Well, easy doing this one-handed. Right. It's kind of in. Might still, the crosshead might be still a bit forwards actually, from where it wants to be, irritatingly. Um, is there any alternative way of chocking the bit of wood, do you think? <laughs> uh, it's never easy. Although, having said that, once we got the um, once we got the spike through, it shouldn't be the end of the world. Give us a bit of light. That's it. Lovely. Right. Now I've got it engaged in the in the wedge. Yeah. Is it going to go in the button, or is it? Uh, needs the button needs to go up a bit. I think. That's it. That's got that's got the puppy. Yes. Nice. 
the crosshead's trying to drop as, again, isn't it? Yeah. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Right then. Well, if we tap it, we should put it straight. I think uh, we might need to wedge it. Yeah, it's just because it's pulling the whole pulling the whole assembly around. Yeah. yeah. Right. You're going sledgehammer again. All right. Right, get set up and give it a give it a tap, and then I'll go in and I'll try and get some footage of it. Actually, Sorry. that'll do. Right, that'll seat it. Yeah, give it one more. Okay, go for it. Uh, it's bringing it all forwards. That's nice. Yeah, it means it's seating itself. This might seem like an insane amount of force to be applying here, but the big castings, and like I said, it's a very, very tight fit. You're going to see in a moment, you might just find. If you look here, you'll just start to see it move. There you go. It will. You'll just see that little, and a bit more, that little shiny edge there is the, um, the tape is just starting to split. Once more. There it comes. That's it. One more. Hey! Oh. Right, quick explanation of how this all works. So you've seen this actually mounted in the crosshead and that that sat. Do you want to come around the other side? I can't tell if I can see you. Ah, no. You're fine. It's, it's on. It's all kind of narrow at the moment, so try, just try and get that in shot. I'll be fine. So, you've seen this sat in the crosshead. So this goes where the the pin that connects the crosshead to the connecting rod normally goes. So, what happens is you set that in place of the pin. There's a hole in the crosshead which leads to where the piston rod sits. And that hole is so this we call this piece the button. So that sits in like that, and I'm, I'm going to actually demo this sort of on its back so I don't have to hold it. So that sits like so, and then you've seen us drive the wedge in. So the wedge just sits in. There you go. So as you push the wedge in, it just forces the two apart, just slowly, and that's what breaks that taper connection. Keep on going. And bang, once you've got enough pressure on it, there you go, crosshead splitter in action. So having split the piston from the crosshead, the next job is to remove the little end here. So there's several parts to this. It's, uh, you can just see behind here, the, connect the connecting rod sits inside that pocket there. So there's a whopping great big pin that goes through here. So I'll take you through to the stores and we'll go and have a little look at that because it's, uh, it's, it's quite a special piece of engineering. There we go, there's the taper key that we've already removed. That's what holds the piston rod into the crosshead. You can just see the taper to it. It's quite slight really. The interesting bit is here, so this is the pin that the little end runs on, so there's the journal, there's a, again a bronze and white metalled um, brush that this runs on, so to put it together, because the, the connecting rod sits inside that pocket, inside the crosshead, just disassemble it. So this is a, a pin that runs right through 
Now, the job of this is just as a, it's basically a, a secondary retaining mechanism. So there's a few special washers there that go with it. The real work is done by this massive great nut here. Get back in shot. There we go. Yep, quite sizable. There's a washer there that sits underneath it. And this actually, there you go. I know it looks like it won't go through anything, but there we go. Wind you down again. There we are. Ah, brilliant. So you can just see that this end is tapered slightly, which There we are. So you can see that this end is tapered very slightly. So this end is machined with a, a taper. The middle is parallel and that's the actual journal that the connecting rod rides on. This end is separate because obviously this has to go through the outside of the crosshead, through the little end, and then into the other side of the crosshead. So you push it through, there's a, a key there which keeps it in the correct orientation. And then this has a slight taper on the inside which matches that taper there, and a taper on the outside which mirrors this here and picks up on the tapered journals in the crosshead. So you put that all together, so there's a special washer that goes on that makes sure that you, the nut is pushing on the correct thing and you wind the nut on. And you have a special spanner for that and you do it up nice and tight and it pulls this side into the taper on the outside of the crosshead and this side into the taper on the inside so you end up with a really solid connection between the crosshead and the pin and you've got that lovely parallel surface for the connecting rod to ride on. Once that's all together, and if you remember me showing you the little hole in the, in the frame, that is, so once this is, one that nut just back on there, I think it's the wrong way around, but it doesn't matter, so we're gonna go for cleaning, inspection, and refurbishment if it needs it. This goes through, once the nut's actually wound on, you can see there's a hole in there, that dowel locates in, comes out the other side, it's cross drilled for a split pin which then picks up on the castle nut here. And that's it, there's a few special washers and bits and pieces that go on there but fundamentally that's how it works and it's, I think it's pretty common to just about every Great Western locomotive so when you've seen one, you've seen them all, they're just, I think there's a few different sizes. But again, the Great Western, once they had something work, they, they weren't particular fans of innovating. So, there you are. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you've got any questions or comments, leave them down below. Hope to see you next time.